The opening line of Daniel 12 says, At that time Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. This is the prophet Daniel warning us of extraordinary end-time events that will affect the entire world like never before. But it's not all doom and gloom because he also provides wonderful hope for those who are in Christ. Now, in order to understand Daniel 12, you need to go back a couple of chapters to Daniel 10. In Daniel 10, we're told that Daniel was praying and fasting for three weeks so that God would speak to him. An angel of God appears to Daniel and says, since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. But for twenty-one days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Take note of this. An angelic messenger from God was on his way to give Daniel the answer to his prayers when an evil spirit prince from the kingdom of Persia blocked him. This spirit prince was so powerful that Michael, one of the archangels of God, had to intervene. Now, in Daniel 10 verse 20, the angelic messenger is still speaking to Daniel and says, And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. So here the Bible mentions two territorial spirits, two principal evil entities that control a particular region. But here's what's amazing. In verse 21, this angel says to Daniel, But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these, except Michael your prince. The title prince is important because it indicates there is a hierarchy. There are angels, seraphim, cherubim, and then archangels like Michael. On the opposite scale, there are evil spirits and demons, and then there are principal evil spirits like the Prince of Persia. As highlighted earlier, this is important because of that opening verse in Daniel 12, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. We're told that even though the earth will see tremendous anguish, God's people will be delivered. Keep this in mind as we dive in further. In Daniel 12, we're told that a time of trouble is coming such as never was since there was a nation. Let's put this into context. Look at all the different periods in history. A time is coming that's worse than the antediluvian period, which was between the fall of man and the great Genesis flood. A time is coming that's worse than when the Roman Empire ruled and there was widespread Christian persecution. A time is coming that's worse than World War I and II. And the thing about Bible prophecy is that the Word of God lines up with the Word of God. You can have people or prophets living in different eras and in different generations, and when God gives them a word, it lines up. Scripture interprets Scripture. For example, Daniel was not the only one who prophesied of terrible times to come. The prophet Jeremiah said, Ask and see. Can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. This was in Jeremiah 30 verses 6 to 7. Then, in the New Testament, our Lord himself said in Matthew 24 verses 21 to 22, For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. And so, you see, what Daniel said about a time of trouble coming is confirmed repeatedly in the Bible. But having said all of this, you should not be filled with fear because remember the Bible promises us deliverance as children of God. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Now, Daniel 12 verse 2 says, Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting disgrace. For those who have died, they will wake up to eternal life in heaven with God or eternal hell. Once again, the Bible lets us know that everyone is really in only one of two camps. They are either followers of Christ or followers of the devil. Your name will either be in the book of life or it won't. You're either walking on the broad road or the narrow road. And as Daniel 12 verse 2 points out, 
those who have been buried will wake up to either everlasting life or everlasting disgrace. This is the picture painted in the Bible. From this, we can understand that there is a resurrection that will occur when the Lord Jesus comes for His church. The Apostle Paul, in 1 Thessalonians, says the dead in Christ rise first. What we aren't sure of is whether this is the same resurrection as that in Daniel 12, or does Daniel 12 refer to another resurrection which will occur at the end of the tribulation? Many Christian commentators debate on this. However, we do know that God will resurrect those who belong to Him, and they will rise to everlasting life. Now, in Daniel 12 verse 7, the Bible tells us that the man dressed in linen, who was standing above the river, raised both his hands toward heaven and took a solemn oath by the one who lives forever, saying, It will go on for a time, times, and half a time. When the shattering of the holy people has finally come to an end, all these things will have happened. The reference to time, times, and a half is widely understood as representing three and half a years. This phrase is also used in Revelation 12 verse 14. This has led to some biblical scholars interpreting this to mean that Daniel is talking about the Great Tribulation period. Now, in Daniel 12 verse 8, Daniel asks a question that all of us think about, how will all this finally end, my Lord? We all know that in the time leading up to the return of Christ, there will be signs, strange signs in some cases, but clear signs nonetheless. We're told that some of these signs are that lawlessness will abound, that there will be famines and great earthquakes, there will be religious deception as false prophets will arise to deceive many, and there will be wars and pestilences. But Daniel asked, How will all this finally end, my Lord? Here is what is said in verses 9 and 10. But he said, Go now, Daniel, for what I have said is kept secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. But the wicked will continue in their wickedness, and none of them will understand. Only those who are wise will know what it means. Do you see how this theme of separation between light and darkness continues? So far in this chapter, we know that there will be those in the book of life and those not in it. There will be those who rise to everlasting life and others to everlasting disgrace. So we can see there is a clear line drawn. Good versus evil, righteous versus unrighteous. This separation between God's people and those who do evil is highlighted over and over again. And we get to verse 10 in Daniel 12, and we're told some people will be purified and cleansed, but the wicked will continue in their wickedness. There is a group of people who will be wicked and evil in the last days, and even throughout the tribulation period. And when the wrath of God is being poured out on the earth, they will continue in their wickedness. In the last days, there will be people who are wicked in thought, people who are wicked in actions, and wicked in their hearts. This lines up with what 2 Timothy says about how there will be a shift in society and in the hearts of many people. Timothy said, Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, trucebreakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And this isn't even the entire list but you can certainly see that wickedness will grow. The final verses of Daniel 12 say, And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you, go your way till the end. For you shall rest, and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. What is the abomination of desolation? Well, Jesus Christ spoke of this sign of the end of this age and his imminent return, saying, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. An abomination is something that is abhorrent and detestable to God and his people. And biblically speaking, desolation involves destroying and desecrating and leaving something empty. Now. The holy place refers to the place of worship, which is the temple of God. So when we look at what Jesus said, he tells us to watch for a time when there will be a desecration of the temple of God. And when that happens, then the coming of the Lord is near. Now, once again, Bible commentators vary on what they think this abomination of desolation actually is. And this brings us back to the beginning of Daniel 12. 
How do we even attempt to understand all of this? We pray for wisdom and understanding. But most importantly, we stay close to Jesus Christ, because although there will be a time of anguish such as never was seen before, every one of your people whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. So, I encourage you today to continue to strive to be counted among those who will be delivered. May we be found in the book of life. May we be found in Christ, because it's only in Him that we can be delivered.